What is up everybody? Steve here. I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, newsletter that comes from uh, John Burns. If you guys don't know who John Burns is, he's in the real estate consulting business. He basically uh, sells reports. He does a lot of consulting and they have their thumb on their pulse because they have proprietary systems of surveying builders and realtors and mortgage brokers. Um, very comparable to Ivy Zellman as well. So um, anyway, you can guy, you guys can actually sign up for his free newsletter, which I'm going to dissect for you guys because it is full of fantastic information. Now, before I get into it, I want to talk about some some things in terms of opportunity because I am excited now. I am excited that the market is beginning to shift. Um, I foresee there's going to be a lot of pain for a lot of people who are not prepared, but those who are prepared like yourselves, there's going to be so much opportunity for you guys. Now, I want to give a quick story. So my buddy and I, his name's Tommy, we, um, we, we've been really good friends since college and uh, we, we were both broke. I mean, the, the real estate market crashed. We were broke and um, we, both did, we both owned houses and uh, he was interested in building a house when the market shifted. And I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, at that time, I knew I was going to invest in more into existing homes to buy and flip or buy and move into. So we kind of got our heads together like, well, everything seems to be on sale right now. And I did a video, a, li a live stream uh, last week and I talked about um, there's going to be a need for cash. People, people are going to be selling things at deep, deep discounts, not just like real estate assets or stocks or whatever the case is, but physical, tangible things. And I just want you to start wrapping your mind around this because it really, really benefited us. So at the time I had a house in the Estero area in Florida, Southwest Florida, and um, I picked it up super cheap. I got creative financing on it. The seller actually held paper on it and uh, did a fully amortized loan over like 15 years on it. It was a house on a full acre. <clears throat> um, I have a video on that too, how I split the back half acre off and all this stuff. But anyway, um, we started looking through Craigslist and looking at the amount of uh, materials that people had, contractors, builders, even homeowners where contractors bailed on them or home builders bailed on individual homeowners for jobs that they didn't complete because they went out of business and all that kind of stuff. And that is coming, guys. These opportunities are coming. So we got our heads together and we're like, you know what? We should be buying these cheap materials because People, again, they needed cash. They had product, they had uh, materials, but they didn't want the materials, they didn't need the materials. We're thinking, well, we can use these materials when Tommy goes ahead and builds a house and I start doing some flips and, and uh, buying and flipping. So we, uh, I eventually ended up buying a ton of material to build a shed. So that was like the first step because we we're going to utilize that shed to start storing material. So we we even bartered things as well. So um, uh, for the shed, I picked up a concrete block, not from Home Depot or Lowe's, but I picked up concrete block for like like five cents a block. Um, we picked up bags of stucco. We picked up windows, all this kind of stuff. And then once we had it built, I think there was maybe 10% of the build on that shed. It was a large shed. About 10% of that build came from um, like Home Depot or Lowe's. 90% of it came from Craigslist and I was buying everything pennies on the dollar. So Tommy calls me up. He's like, dude, I got an opportunity. We need to go meet with this guy. If you guys don't know Florida in Florida, you uh, everything has to be built to hurricane code. So the windows, um, if you if you do not provide impact windows and they're incredibly expensive, builders have to actually include shutters or manual shutters on new construction. It's part of the code now um, to buy. And a lot of builders do that as opposed to providing impact windows because impact windows are incredibly expensive. So anyway, Tommy calls me up and there was a contractor and this dude had like so many windows, so tons of impact windows. And the we we literally were buying these windows at like 
10 per, and they're brand new at like 10% of the wholesale cost. We were getting these things dirt cheap. The guy had a warehouse that he had to get out of because again, he was trying to bring his um, overhead low because he was, you know, there was no more remodeling going on and building going on. So what do you do? You start to lower your overhead costs. So he had flex space out in Naples. We go we meet with the guy and um, turns out, you know, he's got windows, he's got two by fours, all this stuff. So anyway, we bought probably 40 to 50 windows and they are heavy to say the least. We also bought impact sliders um, from that guy. And then as time progressed, um, I was buying sheets of drywall from, I had these guys deliver, I don't know how many four by eight sheets of drywall, not Chinese drywall either, they were clean. Um, I don't know how many sheets, but they literally, they didn't want it in their storage anymore. Again, they had to get rid of this stuff. So they delivered all these sheets of drywall to my house, which I needed for my house. I needed probably about 20 boards because I was doing a remodel at the time. They delivered it and then I had all these other sheets of drywall that we were utilizing. These sheets of drywall, um, you know, I think I was paying like a dollar a board just to give you guys an idea. So anyway, huge, huge opportunity. So kind of wrap your head around that as I'm going through this. And again, this is like, this isn't my opinion. These are firms that are heavily researching what's going on in housing and everything else. So it's important that we're, we're looking at um, the professionals and the professionals that really have their thumb on the pulse. So um, anyway, if you go to John Burns, you guys can just Google John Burns and then get on his, um, his email list and you guys will get reports like this. Uh, this is just a four page report that we're gonna go over. Um, the housing re reset, in the words of uh, Chair Powell, to create a housing reset is working in more ways than many realize. While much has been written about declining home sales due to higher mortgage rates, much less has have been written about declines throughout other areas of the housing industry. The Fed is throwing the housing market under the bus in, a, in its attempt to rein in inflationary pressures. Um, if you watch a couple of my other videos, I talked about Powell's interview with the Cato Institute. And the dude, he's saying it to you guys. He's saying that we need a reset. He's saying that they're, they're going to continue to quantitative tight tightening in, in the amount of like 95 billion runoff of their balance sheet every single month for at least the next two years, unless we hit a shock and then they might go back into buying assets. Um, investors are pulling back. Rising borrow costs have driven many investors, including fix and flippers out of the market. Fix and flippers investors across the country revealed 35% of flippers saw at least half of their deals fall through due to rise in financing costs. These two uh, comments we received from flippers sum up current market conditions. The first one was uh, in Atlanta, Georgia flipper. There is a much higher risk environment due to rising rates. And uh, another flipper in Charlotte, North Carolina, higher prices for purchases and rising interest rates are hurting our ability to acquire homes. Um, obviously, the cost of money is hurting a lot of people. And um, I even know some flippers here locally that they, they did really well. So taking a loss on a couple properties is not a big deal, but they are uh, taking some losses right now based on flips that uh, <clears throat> they are just liquidating because they know what's coming. Rising borrow costs have also slowed the single family rental market. This is a theme that single family REITs echoed in their second quarter 2022 earnings commentary over the last few weeks. Um, as capital markets recalibrate, we will likely see a slower pace of acquisitions from all institutional investors. CEOs of two of the largest rental home companies say it best. Um, cap and this, the second one we actually used to work for. I did another video on this in terms of Blackstone. Blackstone owns Invitation Homes. They said, we don't love where our cost of capital is today on our balance sheets, but we've done a nice job of building out our investment management business over the last couple of years. So we think that will lend itself to additional opportunities in the future. They are pulling back. Um, they understand that right now, um, taking consideration the cost of uh, debt 
and um, the values of houses right now, it's, uh, it, it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to get anything that makes sense in terms of a cash flow position and they're hedging their bet to make sure that they don't overextend themselves. And then America, American homes for rent, capital costs for us, as well as individual homeowner has changed and that's got to be reflected in the markets, marketplace. It's getting there, but it's not there yet. I don't even know what the last line even means or what they're trying to convey there, but I don't see we're gonna get there yet until this cycle runs its course. Um, home builders, home building industry pullback. Obviously, I've done other videos on this as well. It isn't just home builders are, uh, who are feeling the pain of higher rates. Some home builders are dropping land deals or renegotiating terms and price to better reflect today's fundamentals negatively impacting the current and future businesses of everyone involved in land and home development. I want to touch on this too. One of the assets that in usually in real estate that you're going to see go on a decline quicker than anything else in a lot of cases is going to be land. Um, because in most cases, and I'm not talking larger tracts of land, I'm talking because you know, a lot of those guys have the ability to hold those uh, parcels of land. But I'm talking about individual lot owners. Um, a lot of times they, uh, it's money coming out of their pocket every year because they have taxes on it that they have to pay and they can't necessarily cash flow that asset like renting out a house. So if you guys are in the market for land, I would say just be patient because I believe that um, as construction really comes to a halt in most areas and nobody's buying land to build and go vertical on those par uh, parcels of land, um, the land sales is just gonna stagnate and, and pretty much stop. So um, you'll, see, you'll see better, better uh, deals on individual vacant parcels. Uh, what about apartment complexes? Apartment operators feel the pain as well. Uh, rising interest rates, uh, costs of cutting their pro uh, profits. John Burton's recently met with a large apartment company who told him that they'd be selling most of their holdings at a loss these days. So instead, they're going to continue on holding these properties. And that's what um, a lot of these apartment uh, builders were doing was instead of uh, building them to rent out, a lot of them would build them, rent them out, and then they would flip them to institutional investors. And right now they're saying that they just cannot do that. Hopefully a lot of these um, owners of apartment complexes have some um, really strong financing in place and not necessarily short-term debt. And it brings me to a conversation I had with uh, a buddy of mine. His family is in, in the business of building apartment complexes and everything else. He calls me about asking if I had any contacts for an engineer because they're, um, they're bringing money from Jersey to Southwest Florida to build some apartment complexes out here. And I was like, you know, have you, have you kind of just been looking around what's going on and in terms of the amount of building of apartment complexes? And he's like, yeah, it's, it's insane. Like we have apartment complexes everywhere. And he's like, even parcels of land that I didn't even think would be developed there's apartment complexes going up. And I was like, yeah, I see that too. And I was like, does that make you nervous at all? And he's like, well, you know, I, we haven't really thought about it, you know? And I think that a, there's a, before I go on with this, there's a, um, a preconceived notion, especially with Florida and DeSantis and everything else. And everybody's moving to Florida. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of people moving to Florida, moving their businesses here and everything else. And that's going to continue so as bad politics happens in other states. Um, but you have to understand too is a lot of Florida is a lot of Florida's economy outside of tourism and great weather and everything else and no sales tax or income tax is um, a big portion of the industry out here is construction. And I saw that when construction died off. You're talking new builds, remodels, and everything else. People left the area because all they knew was how to lay tile. All they knew was how to be a carpenter. So they moved out of the area to find work elsewhere. So it's something to keep an eye on, um, even in your state, wherever you guys are at. Uh, the transaction market has slowed down substantially given everything that's going on with the Fed. The cost of capital has gone up for everyone. 
And for buyers that were using 60 to 80% leverage, the game has changed and their return on equities have gone down. We think that values will probably go uh, gone down anywhere from negative 10 to negative 15%. That's pertain to apartment uh, buildings. And then uh, lastly, I want to talk about remodeling because I think this touches home for a lot of people too. Whether you're actually trying to remodel your own home or you're in the trade business, uh, remodeling is also slowing. Customers taking out loans for large remodeling projects now face stricter lending criteria and may delay their projects until they save up cash or interest rates fall. I don't think that we're going to see interest rates necessarily falling anytime soon. Again, I think the cycle needs to play out. <clears throat> um, both uh, entities qualified remodeler and the National Kitchen and Bath Association forecast slower times ahead. Residential remodeling is softening as consumers postpone upgrading their homes. And that's from Mohawk Industries. Um, and we can go on and on, uh, starting with mortgages and real estate agent industries who have been announcing significant layoffs. Um, People go where there's opportunity. A lot of people do. They go where the gold is at. It's the gold rush, right? And I've seen, I saw this in the last crash. I'm seeing it now. And how many real estate agents jumped into the industry when mainstream media all of a sudden is like, it's a hot real estate market. Tons of real estate agents quit their jobs, jumped into real estate, and over the last three, four, or five months, their businesses have flatlined because they were just working with buyers. They were not necessarily um, putting a lot of emphasis on how to go after listings for their business, which is very, very important if you're a real estate agent. Anyway, they jumped in the gold rush, flatline. They're going back into diff different industries. I'm seeing it here in Southwest Florida. I know people are getting out of the business and going elsewhere. Same thing with mortgages. The mortgage industry, at least with real estate, you, you still have a certain amount of people that are buying and selling and there's still a certain amount of cash buyers on the sidelines, so you're still selling a product. The mortgage industry has gotta be extremely, extremely difficult right now and we are seeing obviously mass, mass layoffs with the larger entities, but the smaller guys here in Southwest Florida, they are struggling, they are, the ones that are gonna survive are the ones that are pounding the doors of real estate agents, developing those relationships and so forth. Um, all of this that I just went through, you guys can get it through John Burns, um, but the, the point I wanna make and it's the point I brought up in the beginning is all I see right now is opportunity for us, for you, for myself, for everybody around us. There is going to be so much opportunity. So be sure you guys are preparing, have extra cash on the side, and start educating yourselves. Get on Craigslist and just see what people are selling. You don't, you have no clue. I mean, you might be into car flipping, you might be into boat flipping, you might be into, you know, flipping lawnmowers. I don't know, but a lot of people are going to have, especially with inflation and everything else, they're gonna be in really bad shape and they're gonna need cash. They're gonna need cash for the simple survival of preparing for their families that shelter, food and water, and people will sell everything at a discount. And ultimately you're helping those people out as well and you're helping yourself in return, creating win-win situations. As always, thank you guys for being here on this Sunday with me. And I know it's a long video, but I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next video.